Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Monday, June the 24th, 2024. In this video, I want to talk a bit about British politics, in particular, one of the manifesto pledges of the Labour Party. So there is an election on July the 4th, and it seems to be almost certain that Labour is going to win. And we should therefore expect it to put into practice its manifesto promises. And one of its promises, if I've got this right, I think it's a promise, is that 16-year-olds will be given the vote. So at the next general election, the maybe the 2029 general election, we might be expecting 16-year-olds to be voting. Now, a lot of people are unhappy about this because it gives the impression that Labour is trying to create for themselves a permanent majority, perhaps. You know, the assumption being that 16-year-olds will always vote vote Labour, maybe. <laughs> Remember, this is not and 17-year-olds, and this younger group between 16 and 18 and suddenly get the vote. So it's just more Labour voters. Remember that in the UK at the moment, you have to be 18 to vote, although in Scotland you can be 16, but I think that is only in local elections. I don't think that's in national elections. So, you know, what's it all about? And this leads us into the concept of generational astrology, because I'm starting to think, who are these people who are going to be getting the vote? Now, I'm assuming that the next election will be in 2029, you know, in the past, it used to be quite easy for governments to just call elections when they felt like it, when they thought things were go going well for them. But I think we've got a fixed term act, which uh, makes it more difficult for governments to cause it, to call elections early. And so with uh, this fixed term act, I think it's very likely that we're going to have a 2029 election. So I've sort of made an assumption that maybe we'll have an, an election on uh, June the 28th, 2029. I mean, why not? I've just picked that date out of a hat. Um, no, not really out of a hat. I mean, I've just uh, some random date um, in 2029. It's a Thursday, June the 28th, 2029, and elections in the UK are always on a Thursday. So assuming there is an election on, 20, on June the 28th, 2029, there will be this group of people voting, assuming Labour really does carry, can, does carry out its manifesto promise, there'll be a group of people voting who won't be, who wouldn't have been electing, who wouldn't have been voting under the old system. And this would be a group of people, assuming a June 29 election, this would be the group of people, say, born between June the 28th, 2011, and June the 28th, 2013. So I thought I would look at this generation of people. Well, they're currently children at the moment, but they'll be 16, 17 uh, in 2029. And I will look at them, you know, as a generation to see how we can characterize this generation. We also have to ask the question, you know, are labor right? Or at least... Are those questioning um, Labour's motives right to be paranoid? Maybe it's not an automatic assumption uh, that the youth vote will always go with the government or at least go with the Labour government. And I do want to look at generational astrology in general. You know, specifically, that is looking at the outer planets, you know, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, to get an idea of what a generation is like. But before I do that, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today, which is Monday, June the 24th, 2024. So here is the chart 
for today. Uh, the top right, I think that's a an article in the Times from May, um, announcing when you know, announcing or at least having an article about Labour giving sixteen year olds a vote. Sixteen year olds a vote. And so looking at what's happening today, uh, the moon's in Aquarius. And we kind of have a grand trine in air signs. So we've got a moon-Pluto conjunction in Aquarius. Aquarius, of course, is an air sign. And we have Jupiter in Gemini. Gemini, another air sign. So we've got Moon, Trine, Jupiter, and there's the South Node in Libra. So there's sort of a wide trine involving um, the, the three air signs. So it may be a little bit of relief from the overwhelming presence of those Cancer planets. You know, we've got Sun, Venus, Mercury and Cancer. You know, those, uh, those planets are in quite an emotional sign uh, People aren't perhaps saying much and they're more emotional than usual and it may just get a bit too much. But now with a moon in Aquarius, trying Jupiter, there's more scope for saying what's on our mind. Um, perhaps being able to have um, pleasant conversations about nothing in particular, not having to worry so much about the emotional content of everything and you know maybe we can just talk about nothing in particular i mean that might be moon trine jupiter uh, and with that moon trine jupiter there's a certain optimism there which may have been missing in the recent past though the south node there might be a certain tendency in terms of what we're talking about what we're thinking about to dwell on things that we should have uh, perhaps given up on. Perhaps we're worrying too much about the past. We're getting hung up on ideas that maybe we should have grown out of. So that is certainly a possibility. Also, Moon conjunct Pluto. That Moon conjunct Pluto may be a little bit obsessive. You know, I've said that it should be about taking things lightly that's the way to go. But Moon conjunct Pluto may get caught on particular ideas and just take them a little too seriously. And then later in the day, you know, particularly if you're in, if you're in the Americas, the Moon starts making a square to Mars. And Mars is in Taurus, which is a fixed sign. Moon, of course, is in Aquarius, which is another fixed sign. You know, we could say that the Moon is actually aspecting the Mars-Pluto midpoint. And as it starts to make that square to, to Mars, and so there could be a bit of aggravation moving in as the day progresses, particularly if we focus on the wrong things. You know, it's nice if we can just focus on things which aren't important, that aren't really important to people's core identities. But if we get tangled up in the wrong issues, people might start to get defensive. You know, moon, square, Mars, people being stubborn holding on to their opinions through thick and thin. So be a bit careful, especially towards the end of the day. And there are a few midpoint aspects that are worth noting. The Sun is aspecting the Mars-Uranus midpoint by semi-square. So Mars-Uranus as, as a pair can be quite accident-prone. It can be about can be quite hasty, um, can jump to conclusions, can get angry, can have problems with technology. So sun and just mechanical stuff as well. So with sun aspecting Mars, Uranus, be careful with machines and try not to do anything dangerous or risky. And if you're annoyed about something, don't make that annoyance become so overwhelming that it encourages you to do something stupid. So, for example, I don't know if you're driving and you're really mad about something. You know, you've got to watch your driving. You don't want to do anything dangerous. 
And also Mercury is square the Mars Saturn midpoint. You can see this because here is um, Mars, here's Mars and here is Saturn and the Mars Saturn midpoint is going to be at around 19 Aries and so um, sorry forget that Mars Saturn midpoint is right at around 15 Aries and there is there's Mercury at at 15 Cancer so with Mercury aspecting the Mars Saturn midpoint making this square to the Mars Saturn midpoint you know some of us might have some disturbing thoughts we might have a certain sense of negativity we might think that uh, things just uh, aren't right um, and we might take the view that things are just going from bad to worse and this is especially the case if we're left to our own devices you know one bad thought leads to another bad thought and there can just be this spiral of negativity and so we need to nip that in the bud and you know accept but it is just mercury aspecting a mars saturn midpoint it's a short-term thing so don't get too negative and also mercury is a planet of communication and so with mercury square the mars saturn midpoint we have to be careful what we say we might say something harsh which causes offense it just comes out of our mouth and before we know it um, we, we're dealing with a problem someone doesn't like what we've said and I suppose it could work the other way around uh, someone says something unpleasant um, harsh that we are offended by or we could be offended by we don't have to be offended by it we could just take the view well Mars Mercury on the Mars Saturn midpoint this is kind of what you might expect with Mercury on the Mars Saturn midpoint so it does need to be monitored it's not the end of the world it's not a big deal but just um, don't fall into the trap of being overly negative and be moderate and considerate in your speech turning to the heliocentric picture there's not actually a great deal going on heliocentrically so I'm not going to dwell on the heliocentric solar system uh, with the Sun in the middle but it's worth noting that Venus is opposition the Earth Pluto midpoint you can see this very clearly you know, there is Earth there is Pluto there's the, there's the uh, midpoint between the two and there's there's Venus so Earth Pluto can be an obsession with material things and you put Venus on the midpoint and it may be that an obsession of material things undermines relationships so if you're going to bring up the subject of money for example be very careful the subject of money and in other material details could cause problems people may start to become very defensive and yeah money I don't know if it's, it might be the root of all evil but it can also cause a lot of damage when it comes to dealing with people in a harmonious way also Saturn is conjunct the Earth Uranus midpoint again I think we can see this by eye there's the Earth there's Uranus there's Saturn in the middle so the Earth Uranus midpoint is about instability and not things not turning out as we expect we were expecting one thing and we get something else and with Saturn on the Earth Uranus midpoint that could get us down and so we shouldn't have rigid expectations about the way things turn out because they just might not turn out as we had planned and yeah if we're not careful we could get annoyed about it but I do think it's a situation where we need to be as flexible as 
possible. So that's a heliocentric picture. As I said, it's not particularly exciting. And I'm now going to look at things from the perspective of the 12 signs. So these are my forecasts for the 12 signs for today, which is Monday, June the 24th, 2024. Aries. Recently, you have been feeling a little bit uh, down, I think. And I, I do think it's probably connected with the fact that Mars has been in, moving through Taurus. It's just not, you're not very comfortable with Mars moving through Taurus, at least to begin with. And Mars, to be honest, Mars doesn't actually work very well in Taurus. Mars is um, in its detriment in Taurus. And I think you've really been feeling this. But I think that today there are signs of optimism. You know, the moon is moving through Aquarius now. It's making, um, it is making a conjunction to Pluto. Uh, and with this moon, and not just a conjunction to Pluto, it's making a, a trine to Jupiter. And I think it's a trine to Jupiter that really matters. And I think it's a time when you can enjoy other people's company though you know you can't expect too much you know people have their own way of doing things um you can't expect them to do things your way but still you can hang out with people you can talk to them and and provided you're not pushing them too hard i think other people's company could be um could be pleasant. Um, it may be a distraction, and you know, because there are other things that have been bothering you, and having the right people around you could, uh, you know, could be great. Though you mustn't spoil things by talking about things in a particularly negative way. You still have a certain amount of negativity about you today, and there is a certain heaviness there. And you're you're taking things somewhat seriously, and that could upset other people if you make a real effort to impose this seriousness on them. But I think you need to, you know, make a special effort just to take people as they are. You know, they're not perfect. You don't have to criticize them, and I think in the end um you know with a with constant tolerance uh you can um reach a certain sense of equilibrium though it may be a good idea to quit while you're ahead so if you're with other people you know, particularly if you're just you're meeting them you know i'm not talking about you know you know family members who are just there all the time but if you're with other people as soon as you feel comfortable as soon as you start feeling that you're enjoying yourself that things are moving in a satisfactory direction that might be the time to just leave <laughs> to just say you know thank you and goodbye you know again it's all about quitting while you're ahead though don't underestimate people i think with you know venus is actually aspecting the mars jupiter midpoint and that that aspect involving Ven you know venus uh, so hitting the mars jupiter midpoint um i think could be could be extremely useful there may be one person out there who's really got something to offer, who has incredible enthusiasm, who has a lot of energy. And this energy may be just what you need. You know, you've been feeling that things have been a bit flat, things haven't been moving, but the right person really can make your day. And I do think that person is close at hand. Now, it may be someone that you're with all the time. It may be a partner, a spouse, someone you you see a lot of, and that maybe you've underestimated underestimated them, taken from for granted. So allow yourself to be 
pleasantly surprised um, by another person's enthusiasm. Taurus, you are quite focused today and it's because of a conjunction between the moon and Pluto and this moon-Pluto conjunction is in Aquarius and so Aquarius is a high profile part of your chart, high profile sector and so with the moon-Pluto conjunction there seems to be one thing that you really want and I think it is right that you focus on it just with everything you've got and don't be distracted. In fact it's just really important that you're not distracted and give it everything you've got and I think that you'll be further helped by the fact that Venus is on the Mars-Jupiter midpoint. I was just talking about that when I was talking to Aries. So with Venus on the Mars-Jupiter midpoint, you know, Venus is your ruler. Aspecting a Mars-Jupiter midpoint, that means you've got a lot of energy. There are lots of things you want to do. And it's just important that you don't scatter your energy. Throw this energy into one thing. Give it everything you've got. And just focus on that one goal. And I'm I'm pretty confident that you can achieve it or go a long way towards achieving it today. And there is a square aspect between the Moon and Mars. Now, normally, with a square aspect between the Moon and Mars, you know, I'm usually a bit negative about Moon square Mars. It's not a particularly easy aspect. But in your case, I think it's actually quite favourable. And that is because you've got the moon in Aquarius, a high profile sector of your chart, and you've also got Mars in Taurus, which is your sign. And this moon Mars aspect is really very energizing. It can really provide the dynamic tension you need. You know, Taurians can sometimes be a little bit luxury loving even a little bit lazy sometimes, but this moon square Mars really pushes you and you're not going to want to waste time. And uh, if you give your life a focus, then I think you can achieve some quite amazing things. Now, in terms of relationships, uh, do be a little bit careful because you might find that there's someone out there who is trying to hold you back. It may not be one person, it may be several people. They're trying to provide, they're, they're providing reasons why you shouldn't do something. Now, by all means, listen to these reasons, but don't take them too seriously. Remember, it's very difficult to get objective advice. There's always an agenda. And you need to understand that agenda, especially if someone is trying to restrict your freedom, trying to tell you what to do, what not to do. And once you understand that agenda, you're in a better position to evaluate what someone is suggesting. But you know, in a general sense, I think that you should try to do things your way and not allow other people to hold you up. Gemini, there is a grand trine in air signs, kind of. I mean, it's not an exact grand, grand trine. Uh, we have to use a bit of creativity to get to that grand trine, but I think we can find it. And so this grand trine involving air signs, so we got, for a start, we've got Jupiter in Gemini, um, Jupiter the greater benefic in Gemini, your sign. It's trine, the moon and Pluto. And at the same time, the south node is sort of trine Jupiter and sort of trine the moon-Pluto conjunction. You know, it's not an exact trine, but there is a sense today in which things are flowing. Ideas seem to flow. Um, and you might then think that if ideas are flowing, then actions can are not far behind. Though 
because of the south node's involvement, you have to be a bit careful that you don't get caught up on things from the past. And I'm thinking about ideas. So if something has been easy in the past, perhaps because you, you're well practiced, you might want to just continue with it in the future. But the trouble is, if something is too easy, that might suggest actually there's a bit of a problem there. So if you find yourself talking to, talking about something with people and the words just keep flowing, keep flowing, and you're doing something that you completely know, completely understand, and it's all you know very straightforward, then maybe your alarm bells might start ringing, or they should start ringing. You know, you have to ideally be using a bit of effort. You know, ideas that are good ideas should require effort. They need to be thrashed out. They need to be, you, they need to be understood. They need to be explored. There has to be a bit, even a bit of debate about them. So do use a bit of effort and don't don't go for the easy road in terms of what you want to do next and how you bring your ideas out into the open. You know what you what you really need is, I think, new ideas. And as a Gemini, you should really appreciate that because new ideas move you forward. Old ideas just move you back. And if an idea seems outlandish, is completely alien from your everyday experience, then certainly it should be explored because, you know, you need to keep expanding your horizons. And that is something that you really can do. And I think you can really benefit from from that sextile between sorry trine between the moon and jupiter and so do consider something that is outside your normal experience because i think that you really can benefit from it though i should give you one warning mercury is your ruler and mercury is at 15 around 15 cancer and it is square the mars saturn midpoint now there is some danger particularly if you spend too much time engaging with your own thoughts that you start to have negative thoughts remember i'm a gemini uh you know i'm not singling you out um i'm talking perhaps about my own experiences as well although I'm trying if I'm trying not to project my own experiences uh, but with Mercury square the Mars Saturn midpoint there is scope for negativity starting to think that things won't go right believing that of all possibilities maybe even the worst possibility will come to pass that is not how it should be but I'm just trying to alert you to a danger and you have to make sure that you perhaps don't have too much time on your hands because if you've got too much time on your hands then you're encouraging your thoughts to go round and round in circles and as they go round and round they could become more and more negative and you might come to some very weird conclusions um, conclusions which might not be very helpful at all and this might also be reflected in what you say mercury is the planet of communication and so with mercury squaring the mars saturn midpoint you could say something that is potentially quite upsetting it's the last thing anyone wants to hear and this might especially be the case when it comes to money be careful about talking about money. It might just spoil everything. It might spoil the buzz. Everyone's happy. Everyone, everything's flowing. And then suddenly Gemini wants to talk about money. And everything grinds to a halt. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't talk about money. It may be something that needs to be talked about. But if you are going to bring up financial issues, do be aware of what the consequences might be. Now, I don't want to over-emphasize this Mercury square, the Mars Saturn midpoint. I mean, fundamentally, Jupiter is moving through your sign. This is good news. 
the moon in Aquarius is making a trine to Jupiter. This should be very uplifting. And particularly if you have got people around you, um, you're not left to your own devices, um, you're, you've got things to do, then I think this moon trine Jupiter should work out and it can drive out any feelings of negativity. But it's just if you're alone and you're not using the moon trine Jupiter, then you know maybe the problems might start to mount up. So be optimistic, Gemini, today. I think it's uh, really important. Cancer. The moon is moving through Aquarius, making a conjunction to Pluto. Now, the moon is your ruler and so with this conjunction between the moon and Pluto um, it might relate to you being a little bit introspective. Now I do understand that it's a time when Cancerians are moving onto center stage. You know, the sun is in your in your sign, so is Mercury, so is Venus. But although you know the the broad picture is indicating um, perhaps extroversion, being open about who you are and what you feel, in the very short term, with this Moon Pluto conjunction in Aquarius, I, I think that. There's a tendency, perhaps over the next couple of days, to be more sort of cautious. You do understand that it's perhaps a rather dangerous world out there. I mean, I don't mean necessarily dangerous in a physical sense, but a world where there are complications. And so you need to be careful where you go. You need to think things through. And you also need to uh, use your feelings um, and you know your feelings are telling you that things aren't entirely safe and that uh, you need to work things out in your own way and perhaps that's the key point working things out in your own way um, you can't be told how to work things out and you need time in which to understand what's going on though I think you can find good fortune in the strangest of places. You know, the moon, which is your ruler in Aquarius, it is trine Jupiter. And Jupiter's in, you know, Jupiter's in Gemini. And the Gemini is a fairly introspective sign in the Cancerian horoscope. So with moon trine Jupiter, you know, when you're alone, when you're away from things, uh, you can suddenly find what you're looking for. You know, it's, it's almost like when you when you're surrounded by people, when there's when there's when there's lots of action going on, you're sort of blinded. But when you're in your own space, working according to your own rules, then you have clarity, and you can start making sense of things, and you just suddenly see what you're looking for. Oh or seeing an opportunity, it's just there, and it's it just comes from nowhere. So do look out for that opportunity, or maybe for that piece of treasure. I do think it's actually there. Now, towards the end of the day, especially if you are in the Americas, the moon does make a square to Mars. So with the moon making a square to Mars, there may be something that makes you angry. Um, and it could be someone else's stubbornness or someone else's intransigence. You know, that's Mars in Taurus. Just something really annoys you. Maybe you just want something and you're just not being given it. And it just really makes you angry. And so there is a temptation to... Um, get even more angry if you feel your the path ahead is being blocked you feel that someone is being unreasonable you just want to escalate but i would suggest that you don't escalate um, it's just 
accepting that you know some people are fixed and fixed in their ways and you're not going to get past them and so you know just um try to focus on something or someone else leo the sun is aspecting the mars uranus midpoint so the sun is your um your ruler and i and i think actually i mentioned this um, yesterday or the day before uh, you know with the sun on the mars on aspecting the mars uranus midpoint you are a little bit hasty you know you're in a hurry to get things done and if you can't get things done you get angry you want to force force a pace but in in this the process of forcing the pace you might create a dangerous situation for yourself so leo do be careful don't be in too much of a hurry to get things done and also be careful with machinery if you're playing with machinery you know particularly dangerous machinery and that might include things like cars and boats um just uh watch it and if you don't understand how something works then probably it's it's just a bad idea to play with it um get some advice or just leave this dangerous equipment whatever this dangerous equipment might be leave it for another day or perhaps don't bother with it at all and in a general sense also with the sun aspecting the mars uranus midpoint you know there is there is a possibility of arguments and disagreements and i think we see this also with the fact that there is a moon pluto conjunction in aquarius and aquarius is of course your opposite sign so this moon uranus conjunction may create a few difficulties in terms of relationships perhaps people are stuck in their ways perhaps it's you that's stuck in your ways whatever it is it needs to be carefully negotiated and you know when the moon you know moves away from the conjunction of pluto it starts making a square of mars and that moon square mars is perhaps telling you that there is someone out there that you need to understand and you need to take you need to take them into account you perhaps don't want to take them into account you'd prefer to do things your way but if you don't take them into account they could create problems for you anyway and it may not even be a person it may be a situation a situation that you or a person that you you don't want to have to deal with but if you ignore it it's just going to cause problems for you so it's probably best that you understand what's going on and that you are prepared to deal with it head on if necessary and i think that your upfront approach but it's got to be a calm upfront approach will get you will get you results and will perhaps allow you to um diffuse the situation virgo you know i was talking to a gemini and i i mentioned to gemini that mercury is aspecting the mars saturn midpoint now mercury is not just the ruler of gemini mercury is also the ruler of virgo so i think virgo there's a good chance that you might be impacted by this aspect with the mercury square the mars the mars saturn midpoint um it might be a sense of frustration just feeling that things aren't moving things aren't working and it's it's tempting to blame someone else and you might say something so if if something's not working you say something because you think that will somehow solve the problem or it might just be an outlet for your frustration and anger but in the process of saying things you might actually be making matters worse so 
don't jump to conclusions and try to be diplomatic and also make sure you've done all you can so you know it's like when you buy something a piece of technology and it doesn't work and your your first impulse is to say oh well it hasn't been made properly there's a there's a, a manufacturing error and your immediate impulse is to call the company or call the person who sold it to you but you know first of all you need to consider the possibility that it's your fault that you haven't read the instruction book for example you haven't read the manual so it's just very important that you do the preparation that you make a special effort to understand something before you complain about it and especially today when you have the ability really to get really down to the bottom of something to really understand it like never before and you know this might not feel like something you normally do um, getting to grips with something so so closely but I think that's something you can do and I think it's you know it's maybe about you the Virgo having a strong sense of detail and wanting to understand every detail and I think that could be very constructive and you know once you've understood something really well even if that this thing has been frustrating you know there could be a great sense of freedom and also a great sense of agency yes once you understand something you're able to move and you're able to make choices and I think that in whatever you're doing careful preparation is important and if you are working today if you happen to be working I don't know what you do I don't know whether you're retired or not but if you happen to be working or you're involved in any form of business your preparations are going to make a very big difference because of a trine aspect between the moon and Jupiter you know Jupiter is in Gemini Gemini is you know is a high profile sign in the Virgo chart and it's the moon is trine Jupiter so it's like your careful preparations and your attention to detail and your capacity to read the instructions or read the rule book whatever you have to read reading stuff that other people aren't perhaps prepared to read but you do the reading you do the preparation you do the research and that's going to be very useful and it, it, it will mean that you are well prepared and that uh, maybe you'll just come over as being something of an authority but don't be lazy um, you know it's it's easy to think that solutions from the past will solve current problems if there are any current problems you know I don't want to create problems that don't exist but no I don't think it's about solutions from the past um, being the answer it's solutions from the present you have to go out do the research find the solutions and, and with the, with you know with these solutions you know you can really make things happen and I think in many cases yes establish yourself as something of an authority Libra I think Libra things actually are starting to move for you there is this trine between the moon and Jupiter which I do regard as being pretty fortunate you know moon is in Aquarius which is an air sign uh, Jupiter and Gemini another air sign and the third air sign is of course Libra so I think that you really pick up on this moon Jupiter trine it's like things are finally moving you've got the flow you've been looking for and it's a flow that makes sense to you it's a flow perhaps of ideas conversation um, people not taking things too seriously things not being too heavy things just running from one thing to another quickly and smoothly and at the same time Libra I do think that you're gonna have a lot of power and energy you know you 
can really make things happen. And I don't think that uh, you're going to be exhausted. I mean, obviously, there comes a point when everyone gets exhausted if we try and overdo it. But I think that your stamina at the moment is, 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 is quite good. I think you can really see things through to a successful completion. So uh, it's just very important that you don't doubt yourself. And, you know, once you're able to focus on something you want, then I think you'll have the energy to to achieve it. So overall, I do think that that looks very good. And I should say that you shouldn't try too hard to fit in with other people's ideas. I mean, I think in general, this uh, independence has been emphasized for actually for quite some time because, you know, the South Node is in Libra. And you could say, well, the South Node in Libra, the line of least resistance is just to be a typical Libra, to just balance and compromise. But where the work is, North Node in Aries, being yourself, do some, doing something unique, and perhaps being prepared to stand up for what you believe in, and perhaps also standing up to other people. And your fundamental uniqueness is, I think, really clear today with this Moon trine Jupiter. And it's not just Moon trine Jupiter, it's Moon conjunct Pluto trine Jupiter. And, you know, with this Moon conjunct Pluto, there is a certain obsessiveness to Moon conjunct Pluto. But I think it's an obsessiveness that may actually be quite positive. And that sometimes we have to be obsessive about things. We have to regard them as being really important. And, you know, we might have to give up other activities, other goals, other ambitions, at least in the short term, because we know what really matters. And it's this one thing we want to be obsessed about. And yeah, I think that we can really make it happen. And I think you shouldn't allow yourself to be distracted by anyone else's negativity. Sure, there may be some negativity, uh, maybe negativity from people who should know better. You know, not everyone wants you to do your own thing. Not everyone wants you to be independent. Some people might come up with reasons why you shouldn't do what you want to do. But I think in most cases, these people can be ignored because Libra, I think that today it really is you that matters and, you know, having a strong sense of your own belief and from, sorry, having a strong sense of your, uh, having a strong sense of purpose, that your beliefs are meaningful, are real and can propel you to the achievement of your various goals. And I think you may actually be helped by the fact that from a heliocentric perspective, Venus, which is of course your ruler, is opposition the Earth-Pluto midpoint. You know, the Earth Pluto midpoint represents the earth and perhaps your control over the earth and it may be quite materialistic and with Venus on opposition the earth Pluto midpoint I think you can actually make things happen it's like you have a desire you even might have a material goal or a financial goal. And yes, you can take action and make this goal happen. And you don't have to ask too many questions. You don't have to think about it too much. It's just knowing what you want. And your sheer desire can propel you forward. Scorpio. Scorpio, you may feel that it's all too much of a good thing, that 
you don't have to be everywhere. You can just concentrate on what matters to you and you can ignore outside distractions. And at the same time, you can give emphasis to your own security concerns. And maybe that's fine. And perhaps you should recognise that if you were to be very sociable, if you were to interact with other people, you might not actually be good company. You know, you may just be a little too negative, um, always seeing the problem, um, perhaps, you know, being a bit like what is it sort of Eeyore in um, Winnie the Pooh I mean that is possible um, Eeyore's always got something to complain about and I think today Scorpio has something to complain about and when you're with other people that is a perfect opportunity to complain about something and it's possible that your complaints just won't go down very well uh, so this might mean that your best option is to actually just to fall back on your own resources and to do what matters to you. Still, I don't think that you can completely exclude the outside world because Mars is in Taurus. You know, Mars is your ruler and Taurus is your opposite sign. And so... It's going to be obvious that to an extent what happens to you is influenced by what other people are doing. And that could be a bit frustrating. And so you have to get the balance right. You have to, of course, make it clear that there are things you, you're happy about, things that you're not happy about. And if people are trying to get you to do something, then sure, you, you've got to question why, they, why are they making these demands? Are they being reasonable? But at the same time, you only want to use as much um, aggression and anger as is necessary in order to do the job, in order to, you know, protect your boundaries. So... Don't get too excited if anyone, you know, tries to, you know, tell you what to do or tries to infringe your, or may feel like an infringement, tries to infringe your boundaries. Just, I think in the first instance, you can gently explain the situation or you don't even have to explain it. Just quietly but decisively do what you feel is right and I think in most cases that that should be enough. Though, if you are faced with unreasonable people, yeah, I suppose it could happen, then I think you'll be very good at really imposing your will on your environment. You can do it without any great drama it just happens you just all of a sudden you just start making it clear what you want and I think soon enough people realize that you're not someone to be messed with it's not we're not dealing with a big argument or a fight it's almost like a lead weight you bring this lead weight to bear and it just slows things down people slow down slow down and in the end they just come to a halt and you end up getting your way and you get the stability you're looking for. But just be careful about how you impose stability. And maybe it's just enough to create stability for yourself without having to impose it on anyone else. And so perhaps, Scorpio, uh, the less interaction you have with other people, particularly if you don't know these people well or you don't trust them, then the less interaction you have, the better. But it's just a short-term thing. I mean, don't worry. Um, things are 
going to change, um, you know, pretty soon. And I should finally point out that the moon is making a trine to Jupiter. And this trine between the moon and Jupiter could actually be fortunate, provided everything happens on your terms. So maybe you've got a particular plan about the way you want things done. It's a very clear plan. It's one of these Scorpio plans that's perhaps taken a bit of time to develop. And with this moon trine Jupiter, you put this plan into action. Um, it may not involve anyone else. It's just your plan, your way of doing things. It's very personal to you and you do it and it could be a surprise success. Sagittarius. The moon is trine Jupiter. Of course, Jupiter is your ruler. And I think that with moon trine Jupiter, you are going to be, I think, pretty good at making things happen. Um, you're going to be a relatively exciting person today. Um, you know, there isn't much excitement going on today. I mean, not real fiery excitement. You know, that's because, you know, there are no planets in far signs unless you count the North Node and Chiron. There, there aren't. And people want something to happen still. And you, Sagittarius, might be the person to make it happen because of this trine between the Moon and Jupiter. You know, you know, people are, to begin with, prepared to trust you. I think more than usual. And having trusted you, this gives you a chance to express yourself, to bring to bear your personality. And as soon as you start bringing to bear your personality, then I think that things start to happen. And so the things you say could actually make a make a big difference though a little bit of respect might be required because you know some people they have their routines they have their structures they have ideas about the way things should be moving and the way things should be organized and there's a certain temptation on your part to be disruptive. You know, I mean, it might even be fun to be disruptive because you've got to make things happen. And if you're not disruptive, you know, things go on as as they have done and it's it remains boring. OK, so perhaps a little bit of disruption could be useful, but you do need to know what you're doing. You know, some people's routines are very important. And if you mess them up, um, you might... Um, well, you might make some enemies. Uh, so, yes, Sagittarius, I think a little bit of respect um, is important. In terms of healing, I think a, a bit of healing may be required in some departments. I'm not talking about you needing the healing. I think maybe sometimes other people might need some healing. I think that there seem to be a couple of people who feel a bit sorry for themselves and who actually have some quite negative thoughts. And I think it's quite obvious who these people are. And maybe they're not talking as much as usual. Maybe it's their body language. It's, you know, it's 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 what they're not saying. And you perhaps need to recognize this and take action. Um, because, you know, you don't want people being negative, particularly if there's no good reason for being negative. And by intervening, I think that you can actually show people that there is a positive way of looking at the world, that, you know, you don't have to just concentrate on the bad things. Um, there are there are good things, um, you know, which which are which are everywhere. And of course, that goes back to Moon Trine Jupiter. Jupiter is 
in Gemini, it's in, therefore, in your opposite sign, because Gemini is opposition to Jupiter, Moon is trine Jupiter. So that's about you, you know, as I said, bringing to bear your personality and your optimism, and people are going to pick up on it. And people that who, who feel sorry for themselves or feeling that, or feel that everything is hopeless may particularly be able to pick up on your optimism. And, you know, in this sense, um, Sagittarius, I think you do have a chance to heal. And moving on from that, in fact, going further from that, I think you're going to be very good at bringing out people's talents and abilities. Obviously, this is especially the case if you're in a position of leadership and people have a respect for you. Uh, you're going to be able to encourage people to show what they can do. And that might actually be a good way of transforming what appears to be a negative situation into something very positive. So if you want to compliment someone on how good they are at something, um, then now might be a good time to do it. It may be just one compliment can make all the difference. It can just encourage them to start to bring out their creativity, to perhaps experiment with something they've been keeping to themselves. And once they start experimenting, you know, use, you know, with your encouragement, uh, then, you know, they might realize that, you know, they've got something really useful. And it's partly thanks to you for providing that encouragement. So overall, Sagittarius, the world needs you. Today in particular, it needs you. So I think in that sense, you've got your work cut out. Capricorn. I think you may find yourself spending a little bit of time thinking about money. I think money is important uh, because the moon is in Aquarius and the moon is actually making a conjunction to Pluto in Aquarius. You know, the planet Pluto is connected with money. Uh, there is this word, isn't there? A plutocracy. So a plutocracy is a rule by people with money because it relates to this word Pluto. And so, you know, we often forget that connection between Pluto and money. And so with this uh, Moon-Pluto conjunction in Aquarius, uh, money is, is going to matter. You're going, to, you're going to know it's important. And, you know, the Moon-Pluto conjunction could be a little bit obsessive. You know, it might be just something that you keep thinking about. You keep coming back to it. And I actually think it's probably quite healthy, especially as the Moon is making a trine to Jupiter. So in a financial sense, Capricorn, I get the feeling that you can actually start to make things happen. And your your imagination and your hard work can come together. And you can create opportunities for making more money or for conserving your money. And in general, for giving yourself financial security. I mean, I think that is a possibility. I mean, it's all it's all relative. You know, of course, it's only a forecast for today. And so there's always a danger of hyperbole, of exaggerating. You know, people want to hear about financial good fortune. But honestly, I think there are opportunities here in terms of money if you're able to take advantage of them. You know, Moon Trine Jupiter, it's not dynamic. It's a it's it's a fairly easy aspect, and so it should be relative, relatively easy for you to create a situation where you can um, make things, where you can make things more fortunate for yourself. You know, just through your conscious intervention. 
Though I should also point out that Saturn is, of course, your ruler. And Saturn is about to go retrograde. And, okay, we've got a few days before Saturn goes retrograde. It doesn't go, go retrograde until the weekend, but you're feeling it now. Something is slowing down. And as Saturn slows down, you are probably seeing the world for what it is. I mean, if you have got a, a film that's just going very fast, you miss things. But as it slows down, you start to see the detail. You start to see things that you wouldn't see if things were at normal speed. And you might see some of the unpleasantness at work. Um, I mean, I, I'm sorry to dwell on this kind of thing, but there's something unpleasant. You know, it's not necessarily about you or your particular um, lifestyle or, or, or all the people you know, but it's just something in the world and you can see it. And it, it might be quite striking as things slow down and to see the unpleasantness. And when you see the unpleasantness, you then have to decide, well, what are you going to do about it? Now, it may just be a sense of just knowing it's there. It's always good to know something is there. You know it's there. It's what society is all about. It's just good to know. Or you might feel there's actually something you can do about it. You might regard your, it as being a, a call on, to take action, to be an activist, maybe, or to warn other people. So do look out for this and just be a Capricorn about it. I'm, I'm certainly not encouraging you to get caught up on wild conspiracy theories. You know, you've got to keep it real and you've got to keep it keep it logical and rational and that's that's what you've got to do but uh you know it's it's going to become apparent i think over the next days the next few days as things slow down as you see the world for what it is but you know it's good to see the world for what it is even if what you see isn't entirely to your liking aquarius there is a conjunction between the moon and Pluto today. And this conjunction does take place in Aquarius, which is your sign. And so, Aquarius, I think that you are going to have a strong sense of yourself and what needs to be done. And you're going to... Perhaps be a little bit secretive because Moon Pluto conjunctions can be secretive. Pluto likes to hide, and with a Moon in Aquarius conjunct Pluto, it's just there's some things you just feel you don't want to reveal because perhaps because you're afraid of the consequences. I don't think it's actually essential for you to be secretive. I mean. Secretive suggests that if someone gets hold of the information, maybe they can use it against you. Or you might lose an idea. Someone else might take an advantage of the idea, of an idea, that idea. I don't think that's what it's about. I think it's just about creating your priorities. And I think, Aquarius, your main priority should be to do things your way with in a way, the outside world as being an optional extra. If there is outside interest in what you are doing, that's great. But if there's no outside interest in what you're doing, so what? You know, remember, Aquarius is a very independent-minded sign. You like to do things your way. And particularly now with Moon, Trine, Jupiter... You know, remember, Moon in Aquarius, trying Jupiter in Sagittarius, with Moon trying Jupiter. That just does give you a great sense of inner optimism that you're on the right path. 
that you don't have to do things anyone else's way, that you don't have to get advice, you don't have to ask questions, because it's really all, it's all set out for you. And I think that perhaps it might be best if you, if you don't get too much outside advice, that you perhaps don't ask too many questions. The trouble is, if you ask too many questions, you in the end get answers that are not helpful, that confuse each other. Um, you may even find that you're being manipulated by the answers. You know, people tell you what they want you to hear, and, and that might not be uh, that might not be very useful. Though Aquarius, try not to take yourself too seriously with this Moon trine Jupiter. You know, the Moon trine Jupiter is actually quite a playful aspect, particularly in air signs. Moon in Aquarius, Jupiter in Sagittarius. It's not about taking things too seriously. It's about enjoying the moment, doing what you're good at, and perhaps also interacting with people who share your interests, you know, who, you know, have perhaps they perhaps have special knowledge that you also have. You know, we all have special knowledge and you have special knowledge. And I think maybe today you can actually meet other people who have the same kind of special knowledge as you. And so there might be a sense that you're not entirely alone. Um, you know, not everyone, of course, shares your abilities, shares your knowledge. Most people don't. But there are there are people out there who are on your wavelength. And I, I think that today you may be able to find them. So Aquarius, I think it looks like being a good day. Um, make sure there's plenty... Uh, there's plenty to get your teeth into, especially in a creative sense. And don't allow anyone to undermine you. You know, some people might be a bit undermining, um, maybe members of your family, people who know you very well, but at the same time are on a different wavelength to you. Yeah, they could undermine you. But I think if you know what they're up to, I, I don't think it's too much of a problem. And I don't, I don't even think you have to have an argument about it. Um, you can just um, do what you feel you want to do and, uh, and then everything should be fine. Pisces. Pisces, you are feeling a certain sense in which you perhaps want to be left alone. You know, you, you know what you want to do. Um, you feel that, you know, if you've got too much going on around you, too many inter interruptions, interferences, it's just going to mess you up and it's going to um, prevent you from achieving what you feel you can achieve. And I think there are certainly things you can achieve today. And, you know, there is a trine between the moon and Jupiter. Jupiter is your ruler. And this trine is across very introspective signs from a, from a Pisces viewpoint, because we've got the moon in Aquarius. You know, Aquarius is the sign just before Pisces. It's quite secretive. Jupiter in Gemini, that's, you know, Gemini is arguably one of the most private signs in the Pisces horoscope. And so there's action going on in the Pisces life that other people aren't really aware of. They can't see it. Okay, maybe, maybe, okay, maybe if members of your family might see it, people who know you really, really well. But aside from that, people aren't going to be aware of what's happening and what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve. And so that's perhaps the way, should, way it should be. If you 
try to engage other people particularly if you don't know them very well in terms of what in, in, in with what you're doing then that's just going to water everything down and you're going to lose some of your power so you know concentrate on what matters and if you are going to have um, a social life today you need to be focusing on kindred spirits people on your wavelength people who understand you you don't want to be have people around you who don't understand you who don't appreciate you i do think um that that is really very important and at the same time i would avoid being sociable for the sake of it you know it's you know it's said you know one should talk to people one should be friendly you know if someone is there you might as well open up with them tell them what's on your mind maybe people who live around you that could be your neighbors people like that you might feel that you want to interact especially in the, in the americas um, especially late in the day but i don't think that's a good idea because the moon is square mars and that square mars could be quite an angry aspect you know you you try to be friendly you try to engage with people you you don't kind of feel that they're entirely your kind of people but you feel it's the right thing to do but actually it could turn out to be the wrong thing to do maybe because you inadvertently give something away or you tell someone something about who you are and your opinions and then you get a negative reaction so i would suggest don't talk to people if you don't know them well okay you can say hello but don't talk to people in a way that is that shows any sense of depth if you don't know them well because as i said there's it's just a danger that you might reveal too much and that might lead to an unpleasant situation but i think if you're careful that that shouldn't happen okay that's it those are my forecasts for the 12 signs and what i'm going to do now is i am going to look at today from the perspective of the i ching so i asked the question what is monday going to be like for those watching the i ching segment of this video and the first hexagram i got was number 3 difficulty at the beginning so this hexagram indicates that to begin with things could be hard work things just aren't moving and you know we have to work out what to do how we how we going to deal with the problem and the eating it's not entirely positive you know we've got two moving lines uh the bottom line moves and the third from from the bottom moves and with that bottom line moving there is a suggestion that we're simply not strong enough um we just haven't got the resources to see something through and it's just important that we really recognize this you know we just haven't got what it takes um you know there's no point in continuing with something if it's just not going to work we should pause and see what help is available and then the third line from the bottom moves now the third line from the bottom in 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 the eating is often rather difficult and i think in this case it's also it is really is difficult and yeah we we might feel that we want to continue with something it would be great if we were to be successful It'd be fantastic 
and you know we might want to just push through because we're, you know we're really focusing on the su- on the success we want it to happen but still we have not got the resources it's we have not got what it takes and i think it's just best that we recognize that because if we were to just plow on you know it's it's not going to work out now i know it says difficulty at the beginning it doesn't say anything about the end is it going to be difficult at the ending well the I Ching doesn't really say but those two moving lines are both problematic just simply not having what it takes to be successful so this raises the possibility that even even if we try hard you know this beginning could just continue right through until the ending but we do get a transition so because we've got these two hexagrams moving we move to a second hexagram which is i'm afraid it's hexagram 39 which is obstruction and so things don't really work out difficulty at the beginning Uh, we keep trying but we don't have the resources to see it through maybe we just keep keep trying but we move to obstruction and we find that we're actually stuck uh we can't move forward well we would be advised not to move forward um we have a choice perhaps we can stay where we are okay we've gone as far as we can perhaps we should just pause maybe at some stage there is going to be help on the way or we could retreat there's certainly no dishonor in retreating in fact it might be might be the best thing to do now it's it doesn't mean to say that whatever we're engaged in it's going to always be a problem but we're never ever going to achieve it remember this is this itching is just for one day i'm just really and tomorrow is another day but as far as today is concerned i think it's going to be difficult to achieve our number one goal uh, we're just going to run into trouble and um, yeah we could keep trying we could keep pushing we might make some progress but in the end i think we're going to be ground to a halt and we might find ultimately that the best thing to do is retreat i'm really sorry to end on that note but it is as i said just one day and tomorrow is going to be different but uh, right now i would uh, suggest caution and just just bear in mind that uh, you're unlikely to be able to see things through and just at the very least a pause might be the right approach okay so now i'm going to look at the astrology it's kind of a bit difficult what i'm trying to discuss and i hope it makes sense so what inspired me to talk about generational astrology was this idea that there's this group of people that are going to be given the vote 16 year olds and this is going to happen if labor win the election now they might just in of course i'm talking about the uk here and i'm talking about you know the the british um political and social situation i don't know to what extent this would apply to other countries i think it's it's certainly a useful framework of analysis this but who are these 16 year olds you know what is what kind of people they are and i think in order to understand what kind of person no okay not not what kind of person they are what kind of generation they are it's just always important to look at those outer planets so i'm going to start by looking at some historical figures before i talk about 16 year olds in the uk just to give you an idea about the way i'm the way i'm thinking so for example um 
let us take um, Maximilien Robespierre. So Maximilien Robespierre was um, a French revolutionary. And he um, he was you know, obviously one of the leading lights in the French Revolution, um, responsible for the reign of terror. Uh, he was known as the Sea Green Incorruptible. But I'm not really interested in his personal planets. I'm interested in his outer planets. I'm interested in where his Pluto was, his where his... Um, maybe where his Uranus is. So, but particularly his Pluto. So if you've got Pluto in Sagittarius, uh, that's his generation. You know, he's born in 1758. So someone with Pluto in Sagittarius um, is going to be perhaps obsessed about something beyond himself there is ambition but Sagittarius is also quite more quite a moral sign it's ruled by Jupiter and he was the sea green incorruptible he was in his according to his own terms very moral and you know I'm talking about Pluto in Sagittarius because actually Pluto was in Sagittarius um, quite recently um, a lot of new voters, young voters around the world have their Plutos in Sagittarius. Uh, so it is, you know, it's an important, an important placement for right now. So Pluto and Sagittarius can be the law and, and it can be about a moral code and it can be an obsession with a moral code to the point of... Um, going crazy, <laughs> launching a reign of terror. I mean, reign of terror, French Revolution, uh, in a way, that's kind of Sagittarius gone bad, isn't it? I mean, that could be one way of looking at it. And so that's his, that's his, that's his Pluto in Sagittarius. And it's square Uranus. So again, this is another way of looking at a generation. It's not just about a planet in a sign. It's about a planet square a sign. And so, sorry, a, sorry, two planets in square. So in, in, in the set, late 1750s, there was a Pluto, Uranus-Pluto square. So he was part of a generation that wanted to create change, was not happy with the status quo. Uranus is the revolutionary, um, square Pluto. And so that's an example of how we might use the outer planets in trying to understand a generation. I mean, we think about generations in quite a modern sense. I mean, we can go back historically. Uh, Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar had... Uh, a Uranus Pluto square. Okay, it wasn't an exact. Ur he was Uranus Pluto. He was born 100 BC. It wasn't an exact 100. Uh, sorry, it was about three or four degrees or. But he was part of a generation of ancient Romans who had a Uranus Pluto square. As Uranus Pluto is about potentially upsetting the order, not being happy with the way things were, and of course Julius Caesar was one of the people responsible for the end of the Roman Republic. He wanted his way. He crossed the Rubicon. Um, he, of course, crossing a Rubicon, remember that meant that he went back into Italy. He was supposed to be not... He, he had to uh, stay out of Italy. That was part of the deal, but he had to cross the Rubicon because he was... OK, he was looking after the interests of his army. That's what he said. But in the end, he, he was able to sort of overthrow the republic. So that is a way in which we can look at outer planets. And you, you could say, well, Uranus in Capricorn. You could say, well, Capricorn is about government. It's about the rules. It's about the law. It's about overthrowing things. And perhaps even creating one's own 
rules and laws. I mean, he, of course, changed the calendar. And with, uh, with Robespierre, you must remember that... You know, remember, he was born late Sagittarius. And so those born a few years after him had Pluto in Capricorn. So, you know, I think Pluto went into Capricorn around 1762. So, you know, many of the people who uh, were, uh, for example, milling around the Bastille when it was the... Um, uh, with the fall of the, the storming of the Bastille, a lot of those people in their 20s would have had Pluto in Capricorn. Now, this is the kind of generation that we were talking about. We were talking about Pluto in Capricorn. Um, they want to overthrow the government, perhaps. That makes sense, doesn't it? Capricorn, government, Pluto, you want to overthrow it. So that's, that, is, that is a way of looking at it. Now, turning to... A few people who are perhaps uh, more uh, more modern. Okay, Let's look at the look at the uh, war poet Wilfred Owen, who had, was born in eighteen ninety three. Notice he has a Neptune Pluto conjunction. Hitler had a Neptune-Pluto conjunction. Many of the people who were fighting in the Second World War had a Neptune-Pluto conjunction. Um, so Pluto could be about an obsession with something and Neptune is about dissolving into something supposedly higher than yourself. I mean, I suppose from a British perspective, that would be dying for king and country. A whole generation that perhaps died for king and country, Neptune conjunct Pluto. You know, with with Hitler, for example, uh, he had the same Neptune-Pluto conjunction. So his generation and Germans were dying for, I don't know, Kaiser and Fatherland or whatever they, they were doing. So they were able to sort of... Um, dissolve into something higher than themselves supposedly and and you know so it goes on you know we can look at every new generation in terms of uranus neptune and pluto so um nigel farage uranus pluto conjunction so we've uh, this uranus pluto theme just keeps coming up doesn't it um in what at least in the charts i'm looking at so nigel farage has uranus and pluto con conjunction in virgo pluto in virgo is quite a difficult one to work out you know i've got pluto in virgo and i've i've never really found a really satisfactory explanation for what it means to have pluto in virgo um I'm not a particularly Virgoan person, I don't think. But I suppose you have to do, you have a contrast. Now, Pluto went into Virgo in the late, in the late, uh, when did it go? In sort of late 50s. So I was born in 1962. Um, and so before Pluto in, before Pluto in Virgo, you would have had Pluto in Leo. And I suppose Pluto in Leo would be about the sort of, Early, the sort of early baby boomers like you know i suppose you know the 60s generation a lot of people into 60s music um had pluto and leo it's all about themselves pluto and leo is that's where one wants to obsess it's all about me pluto and leo and everyone thinks that's great yeah. uh no one questions that, Pluto in Leo. Um, I think yeah, Donald Trump has Pluto in Leo. It's all about him. Um, then Pluto moves into Virgo. Maybe the questions start to, to rise. You know, so the Pluto in Virgo generation, sort of my generation, my mini generation, is perhaps a little more questioning. Um and 
a little more analytical. We can't just say, oh, Leo, it's all great. You know, one's got to sort of ask questions. And perhaps questioning the status quo more, maybe. Uh, but, but anyway, Nigel Farage was born with Uranus-Neptune, with Uranus-Neptune conjunction. Now, he was born with Uranus-Neptune conjunction on the ascendant. So all of the drama of the mid-1960s with the Uranus-Neptune, sorry, with the Uranus-Pluto conjunction, wanting to create change, wanting to perhaps overthrow certain things and asking questions, not taking not taking things at face value, became personal to him because that Uranus-Pluto is rising in his chart. We know Nigel Farage's time of birth, so that Uranus-Pluto conjunction is, yeah, is personal to him. Uh, now, Boris Johnson, also born in 1964, likewise, he has Uranus-Pluto, a Uranus-Pluto conjunction. And uh, at some level, he he perhaps wants to question things, um, maybe. I mean, these are very generational things. They're not personal. A whole group of people born in the 1960s have this Uranus-Pluto conjunction. Uh, you know, you could say, well, Marine Le Pen... Um, you can see that, yeah, she has Uranus-Pluto conjunction. Okay, it's not as wide, but this is what I'm. This is what I'm really talking about. I'm talking about generational features, which are really difficult to deal with because they're so vague. How can you really characterize um, a whole group of people born perhaps over a ten-year period uh, with these with um, you know, saying, oh, they're all Pluto and Virgo. And Pluto and Virgo, I think it's a particularly difficult one to deal with. So this brings me on to the question of the generation that are going to be getting the vote. <laughs> um, these, these, this group that will be voting in 1929, sorry, in 2029, only because the Labour Party is going to reduce the voting age to 16. And, you know, we have this as, you know, some people are worried, are they going to just think, surely they're just going to, they're going to be rebels, youthful rebels. They're going to want to vote left, they're going to want, want to vote for left-wing parties. So the question is, who are they? Uh, what what do, what is, what are their characteristics going to be? So I want to start by looking at someone who turns 18 on June the 28th, 2029. Uh, so they would be born uh, on June the 28th, 2011. So this is the, this is the 18 year old. Um, and so we look at what they have in their, what, what they have in their chart and we can see that they've got this. They have Uranus at six, at six Capricorn, early Capricorn, and they have Uranus square Pluto. So, Uranus square Pluto. You know, we've already looked at Uranus square Pluto. We looked at Maximilian Robespierre had Uranus square Pluto, and it it may be, in certain circumstances that this is a person who is actually not very comfortable with the status quo, perhaps wanting to overthrow the status quo, not, yeah, not being comfortable at all with it. You know, Pluto in Capricorn, this might be about changes in government, um, being very concerned about this government. And Uranus is in Aries. So one person with Uranus in Aries, you can't really say anything about it. So what if one person has got Uranus in Aries? It's not, you're not going to see it. But a whole generation with Uranus in Aries? Ah. 
this generation of Uranus in Aries, I would have said, would really value their freedom. They want to be free. I want to do, I want to do it my way, whatever. And if anyone stops me, I'm going to, I'm going to cause trouble. I'm going to maybe even cause a revolution if anyone tries to stop me doing what I want to do. And I may actually be quite concerned about what the government is trying to do to me. Uranus in Aries, square, Pluto in Capricorn. So that is how this might manifest as a generation. Remember, this is the beginning of the generation who's getting their vote as a result of the Labour Party's supposed generosity in extending, um, in allowing 16-year-olds to vote. And we also notice that Neptune is in, uh, uh, that for that 18-year-old, the Neptune is actually in Pisces. So Neptune is going retrograde. So Neptune will actually go, go back into Aquarius. So some of this new generation will have Neptune in Neptune in Aquarius and others will have Neptune in Pisces. So there's a bit of a change there. Um, how would you see the difference between Neptune in Pisces, Neptune in Aquarius? Maybe Neptune in Pisces may be more accommodating, may just say, well, this is the way it is. Neptune in Aquarius might be saying, mm, maybe not. I'm perhaps going to Perhaps my independence is quite important as a you know, this generation. Perhaps that perhaps that may be how it works. Now we can we can we can look we can move through. These are the ones who are turning seventeen. Let's look at the ones who are turning seventeen on June the twenty eighth. Oh, sorry, on the election day, assuming it is at June June the twenty eighth, um, twenty twenty nine. Um, so again. This Uranus Pluto square persists. It's because these are slow moving planets. Uranus and Pluto are going to solidly be in square for this new generation that are getting their votes because the Labour because the Labour Party has is, is about to um give a vote give votes to sixteen year olds. So again, Uranus Uranus Pluto is is still in square. And then we can move forward to the the sixteen-year-olds. The now these are the ones turning sixteen. Um, again, Uranus Pluto square. So this Uranus Pluto square persists. Neptune is going to be in Pisces for most of this 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 mini generation that is that is that is able to get their vote, but a couple will have um, Neptune in Aquarius. Um, so I don't know. I feel that it's a Uranus Pluto square that matters rather than the Neptune in Neptune in Pluto for Neptune in Pisces. So the question then is what does it mean? It's interesting that Pluto is at around 10 Capricorn. Particularly for those uh, ones who are just turning sixteen, the, the really the very youngest to get their vote in twenty twenty nine, and if we turn to England's ten sixty six chart, um, if we if we assume that England is comes came into being on Christmas Day ten sixty six, um, I know it says December the thirty first. 1066 so that's just the way my program is working it, it it feels it has to convert it to gregorian calendar but don't worry it is it is december the 25th and so the sun is at nine capricorn so you could say that the uk's fundamental sun by going back to england is at the christmas day 1066 is it around, yeah, it's around 9, 10 Capricorn. So this whole generation who are getting their vote have their, have their, has their sun at, yeah, their sun, sorry, their Pluto's at 10 Capricorn on England's sun. And so they may have 
strong thoughts about England and what England represents. And maybe this could be very threatening in terms of the UK. This is, this is, I think it's actually quite a rebellious generation who are getting their votes, who, who are getting their vote for the first time. And not just because Uranus is square Pluto, but because that Pluto is conjunct, is conjunct England's sun. And Pluto is also about obsession. And it could be about obsession with country. I think you could say that some of these people who are getting their vote, they may actually have a nationalist streak. I mean, some others are going to have, you know, it's all going to be perhaps about rebellion. But again, you have to ask rebellion against what? And so moving away from astrology and just looking at it from sort of political common sense. If you had a conservative government and you had a load of 16 year olds getting the vote for the first time, of course, you would have expected them to vote in a left wing way. But what if you have a Labour government that has just got it, it just came to power in, um, in 2024, um, a leader who is not particularly charismatic, an unstable world, an economy that may not make it, um, that it, you know, maybe Labour's spending plans aren't going to work out. They're going to be starting to take have to take the blame for the economy. We, okay, it's maybe notorious fault, the Conservatives' fault, but Labour will be associated with it. And suddenly, there's can be questions from this generation of, um, you know, how are you going to rebel? You're not going to rebel by voting for the government. You're going to rebel by voting for someone else. That could be a, you know, a, that could be a party of the right. It could be a party of the left, of course. Cynics will say young people don't vote. <laughs> and so what I'm talking about is um, is completely irrelevant. These people are not going to vote. But I think if they are going to vote, I would have I would have said they may not vote in the way that perhaps the Labour Party thinks they're going to vote for. They, um, they may... Uh, actually resent some aspects of the Labour government. And in 2029, they, if they do vote, they may not vote um, in the way they are supposed to vote. And I think going back to um, the chart of someone born June the 18th, 2013, who, who potentially turned 16 at the time of the 2029 election, Uranus in Aries wants to be in control and may resent the idea of having a government that is trying to trying to control them. I remember Pluto is going into Pluto will be going into Aquarius, and I think that one aspect of Pluto in going into Aquarius will be um, governments attempting to control every aspect of the economy in which we are in which in which we are living in um, whether it's you know the money economic activity perhaps through increased taxation uh, enforcing taxation so control could be an issue and i think this group of new voters with uranus in aries square pluto may actually resent that control and so maybe there is going to be a backlash against the government, the Labour government, because of this. And so I think that uh, in conclusion, I don't think that this new crop of voters um, is necessarily going to vote as the Labour government is planning on them voting, assuming, OK, the Labour government is not there yet, they're not in power yet, but I think um, they may not be too grateful for getting the vote and they may use, a, they may use their vote in unexpected 
ways. I mean, I could go further. I mean, I think actually there is a real danger for the Labour government. And yeah, again, I'm not really talking about astrology. It's common sense. I think it's going. I think it could be a right wing backlash over the next few years quite a serious right-wing backlash and with this Uranus Pluto square it may well be that some of these new voters are actually part of this right-wing backlash anyway it's all very vague what I'm saying I haven't really completely thought it through but I'm just I'm trying to present something something new in terms of astrology okay it's not new people have been astrologers astrologers have been talking about it for decades but uh, i haven't really talked about it before and i think generational astrology is really important and i think it's something we all need to do some more work on okay that's all i'm going to say for today um i i hope you found what i said of some interest sorry if i was a bit confused um and not always very coherent um, but anyway, if you did find this video of some interest, I would of course be very grateful if you were to like it. If you're not subscribed and you found it interesting, I'd be really, really grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thank you very much for hearing me out and I will talk to you again tomorrow.